So what is it like owning and driving a Toyota RAV4? You know, I bought this a few weeks ago. It's a 2024 Toyota RAV4 XLE. And I've had a decent amount of time in the seat, so it's a good time to tell you what I think of it. First of all, let's talk about fuel economy. That's always, I guess, one of the first things that comes up. I'm getting about 24.2 miles per gallon. Now, is that some kind of super mileage? No, but most of my driving is start and stop and city type stuff. Not really anything on the freeway. I will say I did take a freeway trip the other day, actually to pick up the license plates for this. And uh, I was over 25 miles per gallon. And that was combined with all of the city type driving that I do normally. So I could see being somewhere in the probably 27 to 28, maybe a little bit higher uh, miles per gallon in the RAV4. Pretty good for a I guess a small SUV, although the next point is the size of it, I guess. The RAV4 has grown. You know, back when I first started to notice these, they were a decent amount smaller. Uh, they are bigger now, which I guess is good. They're not massively huge, but big enough now that you can fit a family of four in here easily and still have room in the back to haul stuff. Like if you're taking a trip or maybe going to the grocery store, whatever it might be, plenty of room in here to stretch out, move around and stow your stuff. Now, one negative thing, there's actually two uh, that I've noticed. One is there's a rattle. It's the first new vehicle I've had in years that had a rattle in it. It's right here in the seat belt area. I think probably coming from where the adjuster is for the height on the seat belt. Did you know you can adjust the height on the seat belt? We have that in the RAV4 and I think it is causing a rattle for me. If it drives me nuts, I'll probably go ahead and pull this panel off and see if I can't figure out exactly what it is so I can correct it. But that is one negative. There is a second negative, for me anyway, and that is Toyota included the auto stop system, which is really on everything these days, in the RAV4. If you're not familiar with it, it's designed to reduce emissions. A lot of people think it's there to improve fuel economy. Eh, not really. It's there to cut down on emissions so that when you're sitting still, just idling, you're not spewing all kinds of gas out of the back of the truck or the SUV. Uh, I can't stand it. I really don't like when I pull up to a stop sign or maybe I stop at my driveway waiting for the garage door to go up that it shuts down. Drives me nuts. Now they did include a button you can push, it turns it off, but you have to do it every time you restart the car or the SUV. You keep wanting to call it something other than what it is, right? Now they did do one nice thing when it comes to the auto stop system and deactivation, and that is if you don't push the brake pedal down far enough, it won't activate. And it'll tell you in the screen, if you want to activate it, push the button down further. Something else they've included that I haven't seen before is a timer that shows you how long the auto stop system has been engaged. I don't know why they do that. I don't know what value there is to it really. But nonetheless, while you're sitting there at the stop sign or stoplight, you can glance down and see how long you've been sitting there. I guess that's the good gauge for it or the good use for it is you can see how long you're sitting and waiting at those stoplights. Let's talk about comfort. You know, a lot of the roads down here where I'm at, which is deep south Texas, are not great. Bumpy, potholy, uh, uneven surfaces. I have to say, it's nice and smooth in the RAV4. We're gonna go across a railroad track in a minute, so you can gauge how it is watching it on video from that. You'll know when it happens. But nice, comfortable ride. The seats are comfortable. I don't have any complaints about anything when it comes to comfort in the RAV4. Plenty of headroom up here. I am five foot nine and a half, and I don't have any issues with headroom or anything like that. It's set up well, nice and comfortable. Here's that railroad track I was talking about. Nice smooth over the railroad track, and I'm doing 59 miles an hour. It's not a real rough track anyway, but it's not the smoothest either. 
Let's talk about power, because that's something that's really important to me. And you might wonder, well, gee, why did you buy a RAV4 if you're looking for power? Why didn't you buy like a Camaro or Mustang or Charger? Well, I wanted something big enough to be comfortable in and be able to haul people and stuff in. That's why. But the RAV4 is not lacking in that area either. It's nice and quick off the road, good acceleration. I mean, you're not going to win a drag race with it. It's not designed for that. But it's got enough that it's fun to drive. You know, I've had a few vehicles in my time that were so gutless, so slow, that I couldn't stand it. You hit the gas and they, they kind of look back at you like, what are you doing, man? I don't want to go. It's not like that in this vehicle. The four-cylinder that they've got in here is plenty good enough for this SUV, and I'm very happy about that, too. I'd be very disappointed if it wasn't fun to drive. And that's the last thing I think I'm gonna talk about is, is it fun to drive? Because I don't know about you, but when I'm in a vehicle driving around, going from place to place, taking a trip, whatever it is, it has to be fun to drive because I enjoy driving. I look forward to driving, getting out there on the road, all that good stuff. And the RAV4 is, it corners well, it handles well, no issues with anything like that. You know, going around those sweeping curves or sharper turns it handles them perfectly no issues with that whatsoever the turn radius is really good on this vehicle as well i park kind of off the side in front of my house i can either go up back up do a four or five point turn to get turned the other way to leave or i can just kind of make a left turn back up and go and there's plenty of room to do that no issues with that whatsoever and I don't have that horrid sound where when you turn the wheel and it starts to rub against something under there you ever have that happen happens a lot to guys with the Toyota Tacoma who put tires on that are way too big you guys know what I'm talking about one of the pet peeves of mine I guess we don't have that in the RAV4 lastly I guess there is one more thing kind of goes along with comfort and fun to drive I suppose and that is visibility you know a vehicle is no fun to drive if you can't see out of it no problems with that between the obvious openness you guys can see the way that the pillars are situated never have any issues seeing around things and then we have the backup camera where when we hit reverse we can see everything around us as well definitely a thumbs up for me on the RAV4. I highly recommend them. It's a great mid-level or mid-size SUV if you're in the market and you're looking for something like that. And by the way, the RAV4 is the number one best-selling SUV in the mid-size category right now. Leave a comment. Let me know if you have one or maybe you've had one or driven one. What did you think of it? I'd just be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.